Good afternoon everyone, I hope you're all having a great Friday. Today we're going to be covering the risk of thunderstorms for tomorrow, Saturday the uh, 8th of July. Um, and yeah, it could be some pretty big thunderstorms again. Um, so yeah, what we're going to do, we're going to go through uh, the risk that me and Metforcast link down in the uh, description for his Twitter page where you can find lots of great weather information and, and, and forecasts like this one. But yeah, we're going to go through the forecast. Uh, what some of the models are showing and uh, what we might expect for uh, this from the storms tomorrow so me after some discussion me and metforcast we have come up uh, we we have gone for a moderate risk of severe thunderstorms for tomorrow so yeah it could be a pretty big day uh, some modifications to the risk map may take place tomorrow we'll have to see potentially if there is a lot of uh, a lot better model agreement we could even be looking at a high risk so so you see down below uh, we've got the uh, low covering uh, basically the entirety of the UK uh, and the slight risk covering from southeast Scotland northern England into uh, the West Midlands into just parts of uh, Somerset and uh, central southern England southeast England East Anglia we're looking at uh, thunderstorms, we're particularly focusing on two different uh, potential threats for thunderstorms uh, for tomorrow. And then we've got this moderate here covering uh, parts of East Anglia into the East Midlands, Lincolnshire, up into North East England and towards the Newcastle area. As I said, there may be a few adjustments tomorrow. This might need extending a little bit further west. We'll have to see. Uh, and we've got a severe, we are looking uh, at the potential some severe hazards as well and these include in flooding hell and wind gusts so let's jump into it and as always we like having a look at the surface pressure chart so uh, this is uh, of uh, midnight for uh, tonight going into tomorrow and as you can see low pressure out to the west high pressure out to the east and as always when you've got that combination you've got this very warm southerly flow and Typically, when we do get setups like this, we can uh, generally we get these little uh, small small scale troughs that move in the flow and initiate some uh, help give a, a sort of a, a kick to um, initiating some storms. So there, there you can see a, a trough here, um, just lying over uh, southwest England into South Wales. This uh, is it slowly drifts uh, sort of northeast through the day. Maybe the figures for some storms. That then moves off to the northeast through Saturday afternoon, but then we have a cold front and an occluded front. It's a very, uh, very messy uh, picture um, for tomorrow. So there's a there is a lot of uncertainty, but yeah, a lots of different areas of focus for tomorrow for initiating storms, and then by late on Sunday, those fronts then uh, move off to the east, and then we're well under the influence of the low pressure to the west of Ireland. So. Uh, we're going to have a look at my uh, generally my two favorite models, the Arome and the UKV. Now I'm going to actually begin with the UKV bottle um, as it is, is, is a good place to start. I'm going to just change this to MU Cape. So this is uh, most unstable Cape, which is um, at, at a certain layer in the atmosphere, at a certain height in the atmosphere where the uh, where a parcel that rises is the most unstable. That's pretty much what most unstable cape is just a very shortened version but as you can see we do have um, a reasonably unstable atmosphere being advected northwards tonight across uh, across central southern England and then by about five or six in the morning it does look like uh, one of those uh, troughs that we are talking about uh, begins to help initiate a little bit of convection over um, parts of the English Channel into uh, parts of Devon, uh, not Devon, Dorset, forgive me, uh, and sub central southern England as well. Moderately unstable, and if we just have a look at the look at the wind shear as well, it's in a reasonably sheared environment, so we are expecting, potentially, based on the UKV, a few storms initiating early morning across the channel in the far uh, south, uh, far central southern England. And then over time, as that um, trough interacts with the uh, unstable uh, sort of the unstable air mass we get more widespread uh, initiation across central southern England into the Midlands and then eventually northwest England as well definitely some lightning in places but there is some uncertainty on how many showers and storms form 
and how uh, active, if they do form, how active they may be as well. So UKV has them uh, spread in uh, northeast inner line, potentially a few form and actually ahead of the line, um, but yeah, very complex scenario. Now that line moves northeast, and now if I switch to surface base, Kate, okay, you can see we have uh, quite a lot of instability uh, uh, building across central southern England as that front clears away and we get some good sunny spells. And that then really does build and it seems to set off some very iso uh, reasonably isolated thunderstorms. And given we're in a, quite an unstable environment at this point, they could produce in some very frequent lightning, uh, possibly some large hail, um, not too large, but we could see two centimeters in diameter um, as an example. And uh, flash flooding, given these uh, very uh, intense uh, echoes that are being shown on the UKV, could be some flash flooding as well. And these remain isolated and gradually drift uh, northeast through um, tomorrow afternoon. And uh, given actually, if I just show you the wind shear, these by this point in quite an extremely strongly shared, uh, extremely strong, strongly shared environment, forgive me. Um, so yeah, given the strong wind shear, these could very well become organized quite quickly, potentially severe in a few places with the risk, yet again, of a supercell or two given the favorable wind profile. So uh, yeah, they gradually head northeast and then as instability fizzles out, uh, during the evening, they uh, begin to decay. And if we take you to the Rome, because the Rome is a really interesting, um, really interesting feat, uh, uh, differential actually to the majority of the models. So this is by, so we're looking at MUK at this point. This is uh, tomorrow morning, Saturday morning. And you see that instability really does build across East Wales, West Midlands, and then into Northern England. Uh, we're looking at 15, 1500 joules per kilogram in places. So pretty unstable atmosphere. And if I just take you to the precipitation, it's uh, quite interesting actually. As I said, it's quite differential to the rest of the models. So you see the aroma in comparison to the UKV, really not going for much, uh, if any, showery or thunderstorms overnight. So we're talking um, 18 hours away and it's huge, uh, huge uh, differences in the, in you know the high resolution models. So yeah, the UKV is not going for much. Then around midday, wants to uh, develop a few showers and thunderstorms across northeast England in that uh, sort of resid residual instability. But as we we're talking about, the instability builds across East Wales and the West Midlands. And by uh, talking three four p.m., uh, these really begin to kick off and then drift. Uh, north northeastwards across northwest England and then uh, the rest of North, northern England as well. Now, yeah, the Arome is considerably further west than what the UKV is going for, and actually further west than the majority of the models. So, there is, uh, as I said, a fair bit of uncertainty, and potentially the risk map may need adjusting uh, tomorrow morning. Hopefully, we can get some better model agreement, but yeah, the UKV is really going for some very potent storms across. Uh, East, East Wales, West Midlands into Northwest England. Um, the UKV more so across central, uh, sort of the Midlands as a whole and then drifting up into Northeast England. So yeah, some uncertainty there, but yeah, some very prolific thunderstorms, potentially a supercell or two posing the risk of um, some very frequent lightning, potentially large hail, uh, strong wind gusts and flash flooding. So there's a look at two of the models, and we've just got a skewty up for some more uh, so for you um, weather nerds, I guess. So I've just taken a skewty from it's more or less the Central Midlands for tomorrow at uh, 18z. So this is in the evening, and you can see 1200 joules per kilogram. The GFS can slightly underdo the amount of instability on occasion, so that is something to keep in mind. But 1200 joules per kilogram of Cape. It's still reasonably impressive, uh, and we are, that is being uh, overlapped by 44 knots of uh, shear, which is yeah a, a pretty strongly sheared environment for the UK standards when you've got that mix of instability as well. Very deep moist layout to about 700 hectopascals, 
very favourable for some uh, some convection. Dry within the mid levels, which uh, is ideal to prevent uh, over moistening of the mid levels, because if the if the mid levels get a little bit too moist, um, the updrafts can struggle a little bit, and cake does get a little bit skinny um, in the sort of upper levels. So, yeah, a good looking profile. Um, strong low level instability as well so uh, yeah explosive updrafts possibly and um, yeah you can see we've got uh, quite a strong uh, upper level jet in place which uh, assuming the convection reached some you know reasonable height will definitely be able to tap into that wind shear and yeah some as a result with any organized storm potentially a supercell large hail uh, and the associated risks um, are, are definitely there so that is all for this video. Uh, the the very, well, uh, very well may be an update to the risk uh, in the morning. But that is all I have for you today. I'm going to be out chasing tomorrow. Uh, so hopefully, um, if you're following my Twitter, which will also be in the description down below, um, yeah, I'll be posting photos and updates on there. So thank you very much for watching. Hope you have a good weekend, and I will talk to you soon. Goodbye.